welcome to Indoor Shaman. I'm Shaman and I'm so glad you're joining me. Today we're going to be looking at the beautiful Victoria dress pattern by Vintage Little Lady. This is going to be a two-part video. In part one, I will show you how to insert a horsehair hem braid into a satin lined dress without anything showing on the front. So that'll be part one. And part two will be a pattern review going over the materials and supplies that you're going to need to make this dress pattern and my overall thoughts on it. So stay tuned. So let's start with part one of the video, which is going to be a tutorial focusing on how to put in the hem using horse hair hem braid <laughs> into your satin gown without any stitching line showing on the front. So I knew when I was making this dress in this particular satin charmeuse fabric that anything I did, whether it was going to be put a line of stitching or even a basting stitch, anything was going to show. And I didn't want to have any lines distracting from the flow of this dress. So I began researching and I found several wedding um, dress tutorials that kind of talked about what I wanted to, uh, to do, but basically I kind of picked and choose from all different places and I put together what I decided to try for this dress. Is this the only way to do it? No. Is this necessarily the right way to do it? No. There's really no one right way in sewing. So I hope this helps you if you're looking for a way to put in an invisible um, hem using horsehair braid in a satin fabric or a silk fabric. So here's what you need. So the first thing that you need to understand is what exactly is a horse hair braid and where do I find it? So these used to actually be made out of horse hair, I believe, back in the day. I think I read that at some point. I could be wrong. And now it's more of this plastic um, kind of netting material is how I describe it. So as you can see, it gives it some stiffness, some shape to your hem. So it's going to help hold it open. It's going to make it just a little bit fuller and just give a little bit more pizzazz to such a full gathered skirt as on the Victoria dress. Now for this particular pattern for the tween, you're going to need a three inch horsehair um, hem braid. And for the child, it's two inches. Now I'm assuming when they do release the adult pattern, it will continue to be a three inch one, but I'm not, um, sure on that. So I'm going to link in the description below where I purchased mine. I bought mine on Amazon. You can see it came in a several yards and I found that it worked just fine and I was happy with it in both the two inch and the three inch and really economically this was the best way for me to purchase um, my trim. So I'm going to be talking to you about how I put in this hem and I'm going to be showing you some pictures that I took along the way to help you understand. Begin by cutting out both the lining fabric and main fabric the same size for your skirt. Then lay them wrong sides together and stitch all the way around the outside to baste in place. Once you've sewn your side seams, it's time to attach the horsehair braid. You're going to line it up on the right side of your main fabric piece and you're just going to stitch about a quarter inch away from that edge until you get all the way around your skirt. Now at the beginning and end of your horsehair there's going to be some sharp edges and you're going to want to cover these so that they don't snag your fabric or if you're going to wear them against your skin hurt your skin. All you need to do is take a, be a piece of bias tape and and just simply fold it over the edges of um, where you start and stop that horsehair. You can see I already did the beginning piece and then once I got to the end and found out where it would overlap, I trimmed the um, horsehair down and then I went ahead and folded this piece of bias tape around it. You can see here I'm just clipping it in place over this piece and then I'm going to turn my fabric and stitch it with a straight stitch to attach it or excuse me a zigzag stitch um, to attach it to the horsehair. And this is just going to hold this piece in place. I'm going to make sure I do a back stitch at the end and now those edges are finished and they're not going to hurt or snag anything on the fabric. So now it's time to clip all your threads that have been um, coming about while you're sewing. So you want to go ahead and line it back up on top of each other overlapping 
the edges that you just finished with bias tape and just go ahead and complete that quarter inch seam running all the way around your skirt. Once we've done this, we're going to be flipping the horsehair braid and we're going to be pressing it so that we get a nice clean finish on the um, side and just everything is pressed nice and evenly. So once you've clipped it, we're gonna move over to our ironing board and we're gonna roll the fabric with the horsehair braid back on itself so that it's on the underlining side. We're gonna press it with our iron with a little bit of light steam and make sure that we're just pushing that horsehair braid up into that hem so that it's nice and flat. For this pattern, I chose to fold it one more time to completely encase it, and I like to hold it with clips on the bottom edge, no pins in place so that I don't ruin the fabric. Now, it's time to do that catch stitch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work from the right to the left on every single stitch that we do. Now, we wanna separate the underlining from the main fabric so that our needle only goes in the underlining piece, which is the pink in my dress. So use two hands, separate it, make sure there is nothing going through on the main fabric. You're gonna catch just a tiny little piece of that pink. You're gonna put it in from right to left and pull it through. Now you're gonna go onto your main fabric, which is the green, right at the top of that horsehair. And again, working right to left, we're just gonna put a small stitch through and catch that. And we're gonna continue doing that all the way around the skirt to hold this hem in place. And by doing this, you're not going to have anything showing on the main fabric side. It will just be this beautiful hemline that um, works well for this dress in this fabric. You can see no stitching lines are visible and it's a nice full hem. And there you have it. Now you know how you can put in a horsehair hem braid without any of the stitching showing on the front of your satin or silk gowns. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Now let's go on to part two of today's video. So in part two, I just kind of want to do an overall pattern review similar to what I would do on my blog where I would type it all up. But I thought it might be kind of fun to do this in video format instead, just to try. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about are what supplies are needed to make the Victoria dress pattern by Vintage Little Lady. So here we go. To begin, you're going to need to find yourself a beautiful main fabric, something that's drapey and flowy, and that's going to give you a little bit of movement but stay light. I chose to go with a satin charmeuse. This fabric was found at Joanne Fabrics, and you're going to need about four yards, maybe a little bit more if you want to have some extra room. This is all I have left of a four yard piece after creating mine. Now I did have to recut a sleeve, um, the top portion of a sleeve, so keep that in mind. But you'll want to make sure that you have plenty of extra to play with. I chose this particular colorway because I just had my colors done recently from Created Colorful and I am a soft autumn palette and so it's a lot of soft neutral colors and an olive green tone is one of those. So I thought this might be a fun way to get a dressier fabric in my color palette, something that I could have on hand in my closet to wear for special occasions. You're also going to need the same amount of yardage in a lining fabric now, if you're following the dress pattern and you only want to line the bodice, obviously you don't need very much fabric and the sleeves are not lined. So keep that in mind when you're shopping for your fabric, you're going to need a lot less for your lining, depending on how much of it you are going to actually line. Now for my tutorial that I did in part one, it requires a lining fabric. So for me, I used about three yards of lining fabric. For the child's pattern, obviously your fabric requirements go down based on the size that you're making. Um, my daughter wears about an 8-10 normally in patterns, and this used two yards of fabric, and I didn't truly have enough, I would say. I had to cheat on a couple areas, so that would be on the very low side. This is also a stretch fabric, which is not called for in the pattern. It's just a heavier one with not a ton of stretch to it, so I chose to use it for this one, and it worked well. I did not change any of the sizing for hers, and we were happy with the fit in the end. 
For your notions for this pattern, you're going to need two main things. One is elastic for the button loops and two are the buttons. For mine, I used four packages of this 5 8 inch button that was purchased from Joanne Fabrics. And then to make my loops in the pattern itself, it actually calls for hair elastics, which I thought was interesting and uh, very affordable and easy to come by. And so you certainly could use those. I just happen to have a whole bunch of these elastics. If you can see that there, it's just kind of like a thin cord, stretchable elastic. And I have several different colors of these. Funny story, I accidentally ordered these when I was trying to get a different type of elastic from Amazon and ended up keeping them anyway. And now they've come in really handy for this. So um, these corded links come in a much longer length, but because you're gonna have so many buttonholes and they're about two inches a piece that you're gonna cut, um, you do need several inches to work with. And then obviously you're gonna need thread and your machine and an iron and optional a serger. Now the thread that I personally love to use, especially for a satin charmeuse, would be a silk thread or any fine embroidery thread. Um, Guterman is my personal favorite brand and the one that my machine loves the most. So that's typically the one that I go with. I'll link some in the description below. So the first part of a pattern review usually asks, does it look like the pattern intended? Did it turn out the way that you were hoping it turned out? And I would say, yes, it did. It very much met my expectation for what I wanted it to look like. Now, what you need to understand is that this pattern currently, as of right now in January 2022, is only available in tween sizes and in child sizing. Now, being my impatient self, when I saw this dress, I knew I had to have it right now. So I chose to make the largest tween size work for me. Now, I fit into the bust size of the tween pattern. That wasn't my issue. Do I fit into the waist and hip? No, but I knew with how flowy this dress is designed that that part wasn't really going to matter so much here, but it was going to be more of the length and just the overall shaping and how it's designed for a tween versus a woman's figure. So what did I do to modify my pattern? So the first thing that I decided to do is add the length that I needed. I was about three inches taller than what the pattern was drafted for. So I knew I needed to add in my length, add in length, but I didn't want to do it all in one location, like at the bottom of the hem and only have it there. So I chose to put two inches onto the skirt hem, and then I chose to divide up the other inch on the bodice pieces. So you can see here where it's just kind of cut and you can see right here is that inch of space that I added. I chose to do mine right up here through the arm's eye because I was a little bit nervous that the sleeve was going to be far too tight um, for my body. And I am happy with where I did that. Is it probably the best um, fit with my sleeve that I ended up having to change, which I'll show in a second? I don't know. I, I have to be honest, grading patterns is not my expertise at this time. It's not something that I've spent a ton of time doing for my sizes, um, other than grading a smaller width for a height for my daughter. I don't tend to do a lot of like my own cut slash move everything around. Um, typically I'm kind of grading a pattern that has the multiple sizes I need together and following those lines. So whether or not I did it completely correctly, I don't know. But obviously what I did on the front piece for the bodice, I repeated for the back piece, making sure I put in that inch of space and at the same point. And then of course I knew that by adding length here through the arm's eye that I was going to need to change up my sleeve. So I used my sleeve piece and at first I cut it and I put in that same inch and it just, it didn't end up working well. So what I ended up doing is walking the pattern to find how much room I needed. And you can see here on the front piece, I ended up putting in extra um, width on there and extra height to account for it. And I just walked it in together. Um, you can look up tutorials on walking a pattern to see how the tissues fit together. And that is how I ended up modifying the sleeve piece. Again, is it necessarily the right way or the only way? No, but there's no one right way in sewing. So this is what I did that worked for me. Am I happy with the fit? Overall, I am. It's still a little tight for me through this area. So I feel like um, 
for women shaping, it may need some additional adjustments from that tween, but I'm currently not a pattern designer. I currently don't have any patterns available. So I'm gonna leave that to the experts experts at Vintage Little Lady Patterns. And when they come up with the woman's pattern in the adult sizing, I'm sure that it will be a much better fit for anybody who's attempting the pattern at that time. For my daughter's dress, we were very happy with the fit. The only thing that both of us were a little bit surprised on was the neck um, collar. On my daughter's, there is a pleat in the pattern and it goes right here in the center front and it's only pleated at the top and then it goes out. Um, you may be able to see it in here. It goes out at the base of the collar so that it's only pleated, pleated and taking it in at the top. Now my daughter's for some reason turned out very tight on her. I ended up taking out the pleat and then it was a perfect fit for her neck, which I just thought was a little bit strange. So on my collar, I assumed when I was putting it together that the same thing was gonna happen. So I left my pleat out and it ended up being far too big. So I had to go back and add the pleat in mine. Go figure. But just a little heads up, making sure that that collar piece, maybe trying it on yourself a little bit before you go through the, the hassle of putting it all in and making sure you may or may not need that pleat. Another area that I added length was on the sleeve itself just to um, accommodate for probably longer arms when I was a, a few inches taller than what the drafted pattern was for. So I did add a little bit of length here on this upper sleeve portion and then again on this mid sleeve portion. I left the cuffs alone as the pattern was drafted and I found that it worked really well actually for my wrist. It's on the snug side. I would say I don't have a lot of wiggle room there. Um, but it did fit me. So I would say overall, the fit is likely as intended. Again, I just made so many changes being an adult trying to fit into a tween pattern that I'm not really sure I can um, like authentically answer that question because I made so many changes. But my daughter's pattern, yes, I would say the sizing was on. So one thing that I did find a little bit challenging was the bias strips given for the placket pieces. There's a placket on the back of the skirt at the top and then also on both sleeves above the buttonholes. Um, I found that the width of that bias was just really, really tight to sew the amount that was asked and then to be able to fold it and iron it. So um, just maybe a little heads up on that. I did find that area a little bit difficult. Overall, I thought the instructions were very clear. There were some parts my first time sewing it through that I certainly messed up. And then looking back and reading through the instructions, I see where it was my error. Um, but something that may be confusing was the necktie especially. So when I put in my necktie the first time, I did insert this the wrong way. So I ended up having to take this out and you can probably see the stitching here is not nearly as clean because you actually insert it, if you can see this, this is the right side of the collar. And when you put it out this way, it's the wrong side of the tie. And my brain just wasn't thinking that way when I put it together. But the reasoning would be when you button it on the neck like this, the tie is gonna wrap to the front. And I found that part a little bit unclear. I went through the pattern listing, I was looking for pictures of it, and it wasn't until I saw one of the tester images that really focused on that back neckline that I could, it kind of came together. Now, in hindsight, looking at the pattern, if you go on further and you look at the pictures, you too would see, especially towards the end of the pattern, how it's supposed to lie. But for some reason, I don't know, I guess I just didn't look through them carefully enough, but that was one error that I made um, with my pattern that I had to go back and fix. Would I recommend this for beginners? No. I do not think this is a beginner-friendly pattern, and I don't believe that is labeled as one, for good reason. There are a lot of little details in this pattern that I think would be easier with more experienced sewing. Um, first of all, you're working with an incredible amount of fabric uh, for a woven, so lots and lots of gathering. Um, I would highly, highly recommend going ahead and using two rows of gathering stitches 
not one. I choose, I, I chose to only use one on this one and I really regret it. I wish I would have had the stability of two rows of basting stitches to pull for my gathers. I think that it would have looked much better in the end. So don't be lazy like me. Do put in two rows of that gathering stitch. All of the many buttonholes. Um, I, I mean, it's just, it's kind of meticulous, a little bit of tedious sewing, nothing overly hard. It's just many different steps and you do have to be careful. And I could see that it would be really frustrating if I was just starting out and attempting a pattern like this. So for a beginner, I would recommend focusing on something else first. Um, I can say from the Vintage Little Lady patterns, I've also made the Olga cape. And I think that one is extremely beginner friendly and much easier to follow. So if you're looking for a particular pattern from this brand, maybe check that one out. Those are the only two patterns that I've used so far. This is a new to me pattern company. So there's lots of other options out there and I'm sure many easier dresses. This particular one though, is just not the one that I would start with um, because of all the different steps and just takes a little bit more experience in my opinion to feel confident to put this together. Anything that I would change about the pattern, um, just that it would be available in adult sizing and that I wouldn't need to resize it so much for myself, but that's just me being impatient. That is nothing on the designers or the pattern company. That's just my own, huh, I wish that would be the case. I also wish that they put in a piece about adding the horsehair hem when you maybe don't want the hemline to show. Um, I definitely dug around for a long time looking for that piece of information and how I was going to make that work on my um, satin charmeuse fabric and that's what part one of this video is all about. So I think that that is a helpful thing and again I did it my way. Am I sure that it's the right way? No. So maybe having that tutorial as well would have been helpful. Things I love about this pattern are all these gorgeous button details. I just really think it makes such a great statement when you're wearing this piece. I love the full sleeve effect, the more fitted at the top, the fullness of the skirt, having that horsehair hem braid in there to give it that fullness. It's just a lovely feminine shape and I think it is so much fun with kind of a vintage vibe to it. It has that shorter hemline um, skirts. Now, do I have many places to wear it? No, I don't, but I'm so going to love having this special occasion dress in my closet for when those occasions do come up. Overall, I had a lot of fun making these dresses. They are definitely not quick projects. They took me a while to put together. I was trying to be very careful, make sure I had nice finished products in the end. So if you're somebody who likes to whip through projects, don't expect to do so on this one. It does take a little bit more time, especially if you're using a fabric like mine, where you're gonna probably try to cut it on one layer and use that tissue paper backing. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, please refer to my silk, um, sewing with silk tutorial that I put on here. I have a whole video where I give you several tips on how to work with this fabric base. And I would say the same rules apply here for a slinky fabric or a satin charmeuse in my case. I think that you'll be happy using those tips to help you and you'll get a nicer product in the end. So my overall review of Vintage Little Lady Pattern is that I've been very impressed so far. I currently own three patterns. I've made two of them. So far, so good. I can say that I would recommend the company based off of the little amount that I've sewn. Um, there isn't anything that I see as a red flag or sizing issues or confusing pattern instructions. Um, I think they're definitely worth looking into and seeing if any of the patterns in their collection are something that may fit your style. They definitely have a very specific style to their patterns and I know it's not for everybody, but I personally love many of their offerings. And so if you like patterns and dressing classical the way that I do, you may enjoy it too. So definitely take a uh, time to check out Vintage Little Lady and look at their very large pattern catalog. Thank you so much for joining me for this quick tutorial and a little pattern review. Let me know, did you like the online style of pattern review better than reading a blog post or not so much? You can let me know in the comments below. I hope you like and subscribe so you'll see when new videos come out. And thank you so much for joining me. You can find other helpful videos on sewing and many other tutorials on my blog, IndoorShannon.com. Until next time, happy sewing.